Well, welcome to the Highlands. Today, today is, I believe, Thursday. Funny how you lose track of uh, days of the week so fast. So this is theoretically day six. This is the second full day on the property. We had, you know, we got down here and we had a whole lot of errands that we had to run. And I basically made it back sunset two days and then I had to stay off the property in a, in a city hotel room overnight for another day. and That's just how it goes. So you can hear the cows in the background. We'll talk about that over time. Um, this is Arizona. Arizona is an open range state, which means that cows have free run of your property unless you fence it. And it's on you to fence it, not someone else. You know, and the state maintains barriers to the roadways and, and so on, but that's, that's the rule. Uh, especially once you get out of a city. Where are we at? So right behind me is where the first earth bag building is going to go. It's going to be partially dug in shelter, pr primarily designed right now as storage. Off to that side, there's going to be a shower, shower room, bathroom, building. And again, um, this is one of those things that I don't think a lot of people really talk about or think about enough. And that is that poop is bad for you. <laughs> pathogens everywhere, including airborne pathogens. And uh, one of the things that we've discovered recently, or rediscovered recently, so this is nothing new. We've known to look at that cities are bad for people, bad for humans. You know, and we, we tend to uh, we tend to have a civilizational bias where we assume that that's not the case, and we're taught that in school. But all the all the evidence, all the the basic knowledge data is that cities suck. Um, you probably believe that at least a little bit since you're watching this. One of the reasons cities suck is because the overcrowding creates a large number of pathogens, a high density of pathogens. It's very easy to get sick. Um, in fact, pandemics, epidemics, whatever you want to call them, didn't exist before cities, as far as we can tell. So one of the biggest problems, the hands down probably the single largest problem of indoor environments is handling waste, sanitation, hygiene, poop, shit. You breathe people's shit when you live in a city. Pretty basic. I should try not to cuss as much on this channel. It's, you'll have to excuse me, I'm, I'm a Navy veteran and it kind of goes with the territory. Poop, all right? People poop. The poop gets aerosolized, whether it's because it's dried on a surface and scratches off, or because of flush toilets, or what have you. Um, it gets into the air. You do breathe it. It gets on your skin. It's all over. And people really like the idea of, when they talk about indoor plumbing, they're not talking so much about running water, because that's something different. There's even a different phrase. They're really talking about indoor pooping. And I've never really understood why you would put the bathroom in such close proximity to your eat, cooking and eating spaces. So it's never really made sense. But it's a model of Western civilization, and it's one of the things that's considered standard. In fact, um, if you have kids, you know, CPS will come and, and give you crap <laughs> if your crap is outside instead of inside. So an outhouse is considered somehow substandard, even if the outhouse has running water plumbing, a flush toilet. It's still out, and that's just considered bad and wrong. I don't think so. So I am very specifically setting up a, well, a, a bathhouse over that way. 
Um, that will be probably, again, earth bag or concrete. I don't want any wood involved with the water. I'm going to make it as long-term waterproof and rot-proof as possible. And uh, the, the bathroom facilities will be completely separated from the bathing facilities. We'll get to that in a couple of months, right? I don't even have the septic in yet. So yesterday I put up a prefab temporary shelter. It's one of those, um, what they call a movable or transportable uh, carport, basically made out of metal poles and tarp. You get them at Harbor Freight in the United States. They are made in China and they are moderately useful. So, my, I have experience with them. My experience is that the covers will last about a full season or full year. Um, and they're, they're, this is the 10 by 17 size. The frames, however, will last for a decade or more. Okay, the frames are solid. We've turned the frames into greenhouses on the last homestead and done other things with them. The frames are fantastic. So... It's worth the money to me to purchase it right now because I need the indoor storage. I need storage out of the sunlight. I'm probably going to, in fact, have to get another one before I get too much more built here. Now, that's going to be tight because we're starting to hit budget concerns. Hopefully, uh, Patreon or Locals or something will help with that someday. Uh, I'll have to give more reasonable content. So... They're worth it. When they fail, there are replacement covers available from various companies. Some of them are much heavier, much better. Some of them, in fact, cost one and a half or two times as much as the, the basic unit. Right now, I think uh, $220 is about what you're looking at, depending on sales, prices, how bad inflation gets before you watch this video. You know, I remember them at $125 on sale, and they were a fantastic deal then. That's only a couple of years. That's, well, six years. I think the last time we bought one was six years ago. Um, in any event, there are parts that they don't include that you would really like to have, like little extra poles for the bottoms. The They are press fit together, and there are things that you can do about that, like put rubber... Uh, a kind of rubber cement in there or drill holes and put pins through. There's a there's a lot of stuff you can do to make them sturdier, make them last longer. Once you have them on a frame, a deck, they are really solid, will last for a very, very long time. And at that point, it's actually worth putting some um, reflectix or bubble wrap insulation in and then doing a heavier vinyl cover it's that they're worth it just the initial cover that you're going to get with it is good for a season don't don't count on a whole lot more at least in the mountain west and desert southwest i don't know how things work in the east were which brings us to the next topic of the video this morning so we did we did a bunch of work we did a bunch of cleanup organizing, putting away, building the, the shed, and uh, laying out strings for the earth bags. Did a lot yesterday. Beat ourselves up. You know, it's just two of us up here today. And, uh, you know, it's pretty brutal. We did get the sawhorses put together. That's another topic for another video, is that you really, really, really want tables. Tables and access. Access and tables. Everyone will tell you water is the most important thing, but water doesn't matter. If you can't get to it, use it, do whatever. And water delivery or water haulage out here is is pretty common. You know, it's pretty common throughout more of the east than you would expect also. And again, we'll talk about that as the project, as the processes move forward. Did get a lot done yesterday. Um... And I need more coffee. I forgot where I was going with that. 
a topic that we'll probably get to in the next video because we're at 10 minutes. That is quite a morning coffee break. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, we'll end off here. Like, share, subscribe. Most of this is going to go on Rumble. I will update YouTube incidentally and periodically until they finish kicking me off because I say bad things about, you know, vaccines and viruses and what actually causes disease transmission. So, that's it. You know, stay uh, sideways. Keep your, you know, keep your center, all right? I did get some yoga in this morning. That helps a lot. Uh, I haven't done a health video yet, so we'll catch up on that in a little while. Have fun.